Welcome to the Nuts and Bolts of the Real Estate Podcast. My name is Joe Bauer. And I'm here with my co-host, Julie Clark. Julie, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Joe. Just all rested up. Just got back from a kick-ass vacation in Sun River, Oregon with my crew. A lot of cliff jumping, river floats, you know, bike riding, all that jazz. So I'm ready to roll today. How about you? Very cool. I'm just still in Colorado. Just got done helping a friend run the Leadville 100, which was craziness because we were up for over 24 hours and just people doing insane stuff out here above, you know, 10,000 feet was the lowest up to like 14,000. So craziness. And then we're out in the middle of nowhere and rabbit ears pass for anybody who is familiar with the area. And just looking forward to some mountain biking. That sounds good. I think I saw your post and you guys get up at like three o'clock in the morning to like support some guy on his run or something like this. Yeah. 2 a.m. to about 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. the next day. It was crazy, but oh, geez. very inspiring. Well, speaking of inspiring, thanks for the transition. We are excited today to inspire you all on some lead generation techniques that you probably never think about, or you think it's too expensive, so you never even you know, looked into it. But today, we are super stoked to have with us our new friend, Tony Javier. What's up, Tony? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Super excited to do this. Awesome stuff. I'm making this up, Tony, so tell me if I get it right. Tony has been in the real estate investing game for longer, I'll say, than some of our listeners have uh, even been out of high school or even college. This guy's been around, knows his stuff. So we're going to get to talk to a pro today. I think, Tony, you have like, what, five or six businesses, all what surrounding real estate and real estate investing. We're going to get to know a little bit more about that. But one of the businesses that he have that we're going to focus on today is, is it called 10X TV, Tony, or what do you call it? We call it Real Estate Masters 10X TV. We want to 10X your marketing with uh, TV commercials, and uh, that's why we call it 10X TV. That sounds great. Okay, we're going to jump into that and learn how to get in the the game of running some TV ads, because I bet you guys uh, haven't thought about that. Uh, that's something that you can take advantage of. So let's jump into it. Joe, what's the first question here for Tony? Heck yeah, Tony. So we love to get our get to know our guests better. So if you could take us back and kind of give us a replay of how you grew up, where you grew up, and how that led you to real estate investing and where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So I uh, grew up in Wichita, Kansas. That's my main market that I invest in now. And, um, you know, back in 2001, when real estate investing wasn't nearly as popular uh, is how is when I got into to real estate. I actually watched a late night infomercial called Carlton Sheets, No Down Payment System. No, you guys no, have heard of that, right? Um, and so that's that's what got me started. I saw the infomercial. I saw uh, make, you know, make money, no money down, get, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or not, if not millions of dollars in equity and $10,000 a month passive cash flow. So that was, I think Carlton Sheets was one of the big um, first marketers to really do that at a large level using testimonials and credibility. So yeah, so Is that got me so No, he passed away two or three years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. And so anytime I meet someone that's uh, bought that course, they're like, that course works. I'm like, yeah, you have to read it. You know, it's, you know, and actually when I bought it, it had just gotten converted from tapes to CDs to give you guys an idea of like how long ago that was. So, so yeah, so I, I was always an athlete. I was always competitive. So, you know, when I saw that, I'm like, I can do this, you know, and just dove into it. And uh, luckily I was in college. I was at Wichita State University at the time. It was right around 9-11. Actually, I think I bought the course five months before 9-11. And oh, I was wow. getting ready to close on two properties right before 9-11. Um, and so I'm like, is this a good idea? And I was like, okay, well, I, I went through through with the purchase anyway. Uh, two no money down properties, um, You know, used a loan and used the after repair value for one of the properties, had my dad co-sign on that one. And then the second one, my dad brought the down payment down for me and co-signed as well. And uh, so that's how I bought my first two properties. And then I had a friend that inherited some money. And then we bought like 10 properties pretty quickly within like 12, I want to say eight or 12 months and had hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity and properties and didn't use, I didn't use any of my own money. So that's kind of how I got started and, and what jumped me into the game. Would you say that you uh, failed forward or did you knock it out of the park to start? 
Oh man, I knocked it out. No, I'm just kidding. I know I knocked <laughs> it out of the park when they first start. Um, now even uh, I've been in the business 20 years now and it literally took me probably 12 years to finally feel like, okay, I'm finally figuring this out. Cause the, I compare my first 10 years to the, to the second 10 years. Cause they're dramatically different. First 10 years was just throwing stuff against the wall. If you had a, if you said you could work and you could breathe, I hired you. Like it was just a ton of mistakes. And back then we didn't have podcasts. We didn't have, I think YouTube right. came out like 2006 or seven, uh, Facebook saying, you know, about the same time. So first five, six, seven years I was in business, I didn't have all of the stuff that we have now. And so, um, I just kind of learned it on my own and I didn't really ask for help, which is one of the top things that I tell people to do when they first start is like, get a coach, get a mastermind, like get plugged in because, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a journey and you need to not do it alone. So yeah, I just made a lot of the wrong mistakes. The first 10 years, hired the wrong people, did business with the wrong people, tried to do too many things myself, worked on things that I shouldn't have worked on that I should have hired out. And this last 10 years have been a lot smoother. And especially the last few years where, you know, like you said, I own five or six businesses now. Um, a lot of them doing pretty, pretty, pretty good, big things and, and making very big impact. And I'm done working at five o'clock every day. Whereas the first nice. 10 years I was working until seven, eight, nine, ten 10 o'clock, sometimes even midnight, uh, because I thought that's what I needed to do. And I was cleaning up, up other people's messes from, you know, from my hand, wrong people. And so, right. yeah, it took me, took me quite a while to, to start feeling like I figured things out, but now there's so much education and information out there that I hope that those that are listening, plug in and, and get the right help. So they're, they're not making the same mistakes I did. I was going to ask you, so you've been in the game quite a long time during that, what are we saying? 20 years here. What do you think has been like the top things that have changed about the business or, you know what I mean? Like, is it just market conditions over time changed or is it automation, you know, these CRMs or what do you think? You know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you, if it's an easy question to answer, we don't get to talk to people that have been around the block as much as you. So what do you, what's your hindsight? Like, man, I don't know. Maybe you're going to say TV's changed at all, or is it uh, something like, you know, investor lift or, you know, investor machine and these types of companies that are out there to do a lot of the work for you rather than you have to do everything yourself. Yeah, a lot of changes of the last 20 years. Um, you know, TV commercials, obviously, for me and a lot of people that we help with TV commercials has been a huge game changer. But yeah, marketing avenues. Like when I started uh, 20 years ago, one of the big things that I did the first um, two years is I, uh, two years I was in the business, someone called me and said, Hey, I noticed you filed an LLC. Tell me about your business. And then they sold me on phone book advertising, you know, <laughs> phone, and, it, it, and it was the best ROI. Like I would spend $200 a month. And I would make thousands of dollars a month, sometimes over ten thousand dollars a month, on a two hundred dollar um, phone book ad, right? Crazy. And so obviously that eventually went away. Back then there wasn't texting because you know phones weren't as popular, and there weren't programs that you could you know buy to mass text. You still, had, I, I don't know when cold calling came in, into play. I don't think it was. God, what was it? It's probably been only what five, seven years that cold calling became more popular for for real estate investing. Direct mail used to be really good for us and we stopped it for a long time, but we saw our clients that were using direct mail and, and tied it in with our TV commercials. So we started doing that and that's been working pretty well now. So, you know, a lot of marketing methods have changed and it's still going to change over the next few years. Right. You it's know, getting tough on the uh, cold calling and the texting and, you know, you got to be on top of your game there. We, we have some guests on our show that are experts on that topic as well, but it's, it, you know, it, you got to have like a, uh, you got to decide what your risk tolerance is. I think when you start, you know, you got to stay on top of, you know, isn't there some big laws that just change regarding texting and all that? I mean, and yeah, know. they change all the time. They change all the time, but yeah, there was one, um, I think it was, it was earlier this year, I think like April or May or something. I, can, I don't even know what it is. Cause I, we don't text or cold call, but yes, yeah, it's, it's I, I would say probably in the next two years, it's going to almost go away because the fines are going to be bigger. The restrictions are going to be bigger. More people are like the people who do texting, cold calling at a high level, they buy multiple phone numbers like per day. Like that's yeah. how hard it is. They get blocked. Right. And for me, I'm like, that's brain damage. Like I don't want my team totally. like buy phone numbers all the time. And 
getting blocked. I sleep at night, and- you know? That's why this is a perfect timing to have you come on and tell us about the TV commercials and stuff like that as things seem to be getting tougher in some of the other d- d- marketing channels. Hey guys, it's Julie here with a quick break from the show to discuss an opportunity some of you may have interest in, which is to work more closely with me. On almost a daily basis, I get calls from investors and brokers, both new and experienced, asking me for guidance or advice. I love helping you guys out and it keeps me on my toes too. So with that said, I wanted to let you know that I have a private broker coaching community called the VIP Education Community. And the best part is that it's 100% free. That's right. It's free to join. So whether you're a traditional broker or a broker investor, my VIP education community offers personalized one-on-one coaching from not just me, but also from my experienced broker friends with expertise in all disciplines of real estate and real estate investing. We'll teach and share our modern marketing strategies, our tech and lead generation resources, plus teach you how to identify or offer up opportunities for yourself or for your clients using techniques such as seller financing, lease options, land entitlement deals, burn investing, flipping, multifamily or commercial coaching, whatever you like, we've got it all covered for you. The future of real estate is changing fast and to stay in the game, it's time to learn about all the options you can offer your buyer and seller clients, as well as if you want, learn how to use those skills to grow your own real estate portfolio. If you'd like more details about joining my VIP education community, reach out to me at julie at seattleinvestorsclub.com or text me at 206-910-2985 or just send me a Facebook message. My new favorite phrase is community equals confidence. So let's navigate the future of real estate together. Now back to the show. Let's back up for a second. So what, what does your business look like today? So we can understand, you know, what the ads are that you're looking for. I mean, are you, you're looking for bird deals or tell us a little bit about what your business looks like today and what the marketing methods are that you're using and plugging in the TV side of things. Yeah, for sure. So we, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fix and flip by guy by nature, but actually the first 10 properties I bought, I bird. So I'd like to say I haven't been in Burr, but you know, it was before <laughs> Burr, Burr was a term. So we would buy the properties. I use my friend, I told you would use his cash to buy a property. We would refinance it, cash it out, go and buy another property and just roll the money over. And we had no money invested in any of those properties at any time. And sat, in fact, most of the time we got money back, right? Because the ARV yeah. was so much higher and you know, they would do the uh, the loan to value based on the after repair value. So Burr was like my first 10 properties. I was in college, like I mentioned, waiting tables. So I had income on that side to be able to do that. And then eventually I got my real estate license and started selling real estate. And then, uh, you know, dropped out of college with nine hours left to graduate, believe it or not. Oh, no. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's why my mom says, oh, no, why'd you do that? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so then transitioning into real estate full time, of course, I had to flip properties to, you know, make money and, and that kind of thing. So I've never really wholesaled, you know, the past few years I've done wholesaling where we close on the property, clean it up and put it on the market. For the past 20 years has been mainly flips. We've done close to a thousand flips over the last 20 years, but everything I'm doing right now, because I have other streams of income and because I know things are just going to keep going up, uh, we're burning everything. We're, we're fixing it up you know, refinancing it, we're renting it out and keeping it long term, or we're selling it after a couple of years and doing a 1031 exchange so that we yeah, don't yeah. have to pay taxes. I always um, say that people, I don't know why it takes them so long. You know, flipping's like a day job, right? It's you know, either maybe a real estate broker in your day job or a waiting tables or whatever you do in your day job. Uh, flipping is a day job, right? It's taxed so heavily and stuff like that. It, it, it's a, remarkable to me, actually, how long it takes people to shift off of that to keeping the properties, you know, because in order to grow their wealth rather than continue flipping, you know, like you said, get into the burrs and do you, do you buy any multifamily or you stick to the single family? I'm going to get into multifamily either later this year or next year. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of, uh, you know, building capital and, um, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm working on is tax strategies. So like that's, sure. that, that's a huge advantage of burrs is, you know, not only do you not have to pay taxes on the equity or income, but you can also have huge tax advantages. So if I put 50,000 into a property, if you have the right CPA and accounting methods and all that kind of stuff, you can write off a lot of that $50,000 in the first year, 
it's going to start tapering off this next year because of uh, you know accelerated or bonus depreciation. And a lot of people don't understand that. So by the time I deduct all of the renovations from the property and I potentially get cash back from the property, I actually make almost as much on some properties um, net wise, keeping them as burr properties as I do flipping them. And then I could have 30, 40, $50,000 right. equity sometimes in properties that I keep. You know, I, I'm glad I made that decision about a year and a half ago because almost most of the properties I bought about a year, year and a half ago are worth, you know, anywhere from 20 to $50,000 more than they were, you know, back when I bought them. That tax thing, that sure does work in the favor. Boy, I'm taking advantage of that myself. Well, that's good stuff. Yeah. So how are you? I was just thinking, boy, at some point you might be able to run some specific commercials on multifamily would be interesting little side topic there. But so you're, you're into the bird game and all that. Are you, you're running your TV ads with that message? Tell us about how, why you plug that in. And is that your only form of marketing? Is that, how do you do your marketing these days to generate those leads? Yeah, it's our main form of marketing. It's it's the the thing we've been doing the longest. It's been the most consistent. It's um, the thing that works best for branding. So many different advantages. And the way it happened was 10 years ago, I went to a poker game. Uh, it was a friend of a friend. I hadn't known this guy very long. Invited me to a poker game. I go down to the basement and there's this guy and I recognize him. I'm like, holy crap, that's the guy that's on TV all the time, right? And so I get this celebrity factor of like, oh man, it's cool playing with this guy. So I sit next to him. Started asking about his commercials. And he's like, yeah, we do like $2 million in business just off of TV commercials. And that's the only marketing we do. And I'm like, holy crap, that's crazy. And he's like, uh, let me hook you up with my media guy. He's the one that helps you with my commercials. So I'm like, okay, cool. So my personality, of course, the next day I call him and I'm like, hey, here, you're the, you're the uh, commercial guy or you know TV guy. So long story short, within 30 days, I'm on TV, profitable my first month and uh, been knocking it out of the park since. It's been... You know, it's built a ton of credibility for me and my market. I live in San Diego now. I, I used to live in Wichita where I was born and raised. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to get my business set up where it didn't need me anymore. So I moved uh, somewhere way more fun. So when I go back to sit, when I go back to Wichita and visit, like there's people that recognize me all the time and they treat you way differently knowing you're on TV, right? They're like, oh, so you're, you're running your ads in Wichita, not in San Diego, right? Right, right. We do Wichita and we do a bunch of other markets as well. But Wichita is where I started 10 years ago. So yeah, we realized how good it was doing for us. And we I had people over the years who were like, why don't you show other people what you're doing? And we're like, well, I don't know what that looks like. So finally, someone's like, why don't you just test it? Why don't you just see if you can help a few people, see how it works and see if it works in other markets. So I called my media guy and I said, hey, you know, he's been in media for 20 plus years. He's like, yeah, I buy, I buy ads all over the country. So basically we took all my data of like what shows worked and, you know, our scripts and all that kind of stuff reached out to um, about 10 real estate investors I knew and eight jumped on board and said, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Sweet. And it just crushed it for them. And so I'm like, okay, we're on to something. So then we decided to re start reaching out to other people and marketing it and saying, hey, we can help you with TV commercials if you want to build a brand, if you want to quit you know, banging your head against the wall and all the other stuff that takes so much time and effort. You know, What we do is a lot more automated. And we do pretty much you know, everything for them so they don't have to figure out how to implement the marketing method. And so as we started seeing our clients do really well with TV commercials, we're like, okay, why don't we start plugging them, them in ourselves and start you know, marketing in other markets? So now we have JV partners around the country where we're participating in the ad spend, we're funding the deals. And now we have a business that uh, is, is easily scalable opposed to if we had other marketing methods, it wouldn't be quite as scalable. That is awesome. I mean, I haven't heard anybody else doing that. So you're saying, so your your business model now is to you you actually partner up with some of your clients that want to do that in other markets, and you have a funding company. So you're helping them run the ads. You're helping them with the ad spend. Uh, I imagine not everybody, but in certain cases that there's a match, and then uh, you guys are JV in those deals and and you're providing the gap funding on those, like second the equity portion, I guess. Right. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You pretty, hit it pretty much on the head. So uh, most investors that are experienced want to do the commercials themselves. It's like there's no reason if to yeah. split to split the ad spend and you know all that kind of stuff when they can do 100 percent of the deal. Right. The ones that JV with us are those that typically don't quite have a sales team, don't quite have the funding together. They're a little bit newer in the business. We have 
I guess we have one that's a little more experienced in the business, you know, with our resources, with our funding, with um, our ability to be able to underwrite the deals and make sure they're good deals and just building businesses in general. Those are the ones that like to JV partner with us. And we like those too, because then we could spend, you know, a little bit of amount of money with them, have my team um, help coach them through the process and analyze deals. And all of a sudden we've got, you know, multiple markets we're investing in. And we're not having to start from scratch ourselves and run the operation. It's our JV partner that's doing most of uh, most. Sounds of awesome. So I think the big elephant question in the room is everybody would think, oh, that's got to be expensive or geez, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts. So break it down for us. Like, what does it cost to do something like that? If you can share all that with us, we won't ask you your secret sauce on on your channels and all that other stuff, because you guys can obviously hire Tony's team to give you all those details, but share with us as much as you can about the process. Like I call you up, I go, Tony, let's go. I'm in Seattle. It's probably super expensive. I don't know. Does it work in all markets or not? Cause you just get priced out. Yeah. So, so the great thing about TV commercials is there's a high barrier of entry. So first of all, most people don't think about TV commercials, right? Uh, even some of the most experienced investors that I've talked to that are like, I've never heard of TV commercials for for you know finding motivated seller leads. So most people don't think about it. If they do think about it, it's too expensive. Like I've had really smart people try and figure it out, and either they stop because it's like they they don't know what scripts to write, they don't know who to call, what shows to be on. There's so many different pieces to put together that if you don't do them all right, you're going to throw money down the drain, especially if you go to the station yourself, you go to the station yourself, they're going to sell you the most expensive package that makes them the yeah. most money. And they have no idea what your what your clientele is, right? Um, if you're a heat and air person, they've done that before, but real estate investing is a whole new thing. So yeah, so low bar- or, you know, high barrier of entry, which keeps a lot of people out of it. Texting, cold calling, you can listen to a podcast today and be an investor tomorrow. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Along so, with the 1 million others doing the exact same thing, right? Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with our program, like I have done all of the hard work to like test different things and we've tested the expensive stuff and we've tested the cheap stuff. Luckily, a lot of the cheap stuff works. You just have to know what it is. So we plug that in and then we what have does cheap stuff mean. Does that mean like spots or I'm shows? sorry? Yeah. Cheap, cheap spots. So like, for instance, if you want prime time, prime time news, you're going to pay anywhere for, depending on your market, anywhere from 150 to a th- you could I, you could probably pay a thousand dollars commercial in some of the bigger markets, right? Just for one thirty second spot, right? Whereas we don't, if if we can get some of that prime time stuff for a good price, we'll do it. But a lot of our commercials we're getting for like anywhere from a dollar to fifteen dollars a commercial. Ooh. So not only are you spending less money because we're able to negotiate good rates for you, but you're also hitting a lot more people. Than if you were to go to the stations and say, "Hey, get me on prime time or whatever," and prime time is usually like prime time news isn't necessarily our demographic, right? There might be some people watching, so if we can get we can get if we can get our eyes and you know our commercial in front of a bunch of eyes for a good ad spend, we'll do that. So to give you an idea, the markets that we like to JV in are markets we can spend five thousand dollars a month and get anywhere from three hundred to a thousand commercials a month. I mean, we get a lot of commercials. For a small ad spend, the minimum number of commercials you want to have out there to, you know what I mean? You know, it's kind of like direct mail. You got to mail X amount of postcards to get a minimum return, you know? And and again, I imagine that you guys have done this long enough, like 10 years, you're reverse engineering into your metrics there, right? I mean, you're figuring out your data points on, on who that seller is and sort of reverse engineering, I imagine, into your key data points. And and then, you know, I don't know, you guys track per market. Like we know in Wichita, we need to have at least 500 ads running per month in order to get five contracts or something like that. What is that? Is there something like that? Uh, I mean, we don't have it dialed down that much, but we, like, we know based on the size of the market of how much you should spend, because we know that there's five stations that have the shows that we know work. So in order to get on Two, we want at least two stations. So to get on at least two stations, there's a low, uh, you know, minimum ad spend. If you want to get on five stations and just blow it up and just get, you know, get as many commercials as possible, then you're going to spend more. So that when I say five thousand a month, that's you know, usually on the low end of that market, but it still produces a lot of results. So we have clients, for instance, 
that they spend five grand a month and, and are making 50 to a hundred grand a month consistently on their TV commercials. Yeah. I and bet. when I started seeing that number, I'm like, crap, if, if I could even plug in TV with a JV partner, they're making 20 grand a month and I don't have to do anything. And we split that, like that's still the good passive income, right? 30 second commercial or is it shorter or does it matter? You can, yeah, you can do, um, you can do minute commercials. Those get pretty expensive, but you can get your message across in 30 seconds. And then we have a, a way to do 15 second commercials after a certain amount of time. Cause after they see your, your brand enough, then you only need 15 seconds to, you know, get your message across and that gets you even more commercials. Are you so doing commercials where, for example, if we're talking about you, is it you, or is it like some cartoony thing? You know, you, how you see that stuff? Is it words? Is it is it a person? Yeah. So we have this whole formula, right? We have the shows, we have the stations, we have the scripts. And then the other part of it is the dynamic of the commercial. So some commercials you see and you're like, okay, they may have done everything right, but their commercial isn't very good. So mm-hmm. we have a way to do our commercial. It's the, the, it's the client in the commercial. If they, if the client doesn't want to do it, I'll do commercials, which I don't mind, you know, I'm branding myself throughout the country, but you know, some clients just don't want to be in the commercial. So I'll do it. But for the business owner to be in the commercial, so when they're meeting with private, actually, I had a guy call me from my commercial and say, hey, I want to, he actually walked into our office and he said, I want to invest in real estate. I don't know where to start. And I really don't want to own properties. And we're like, oh, okay, we have a solution for you. Private <laughs> private lending, right? Yeah. So within like 12 months, he had a, him and his parents had a million dollars invested with us. This is a guy that saw your ads, walked into your office, said, I want to work, do this. And you made that connection just because of the ads. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, can you imagine like someone walking into your house right now and saying, I want to, you know, lend money? Like the credibility of that, not to mention my CPA, he and he he does our books and he invests with us as well. So when he has a client that he see has extra money, he he refers them to us and it's an easy sell. They're, if they say they've seen me on TV, it's the easiest sell. So I guess so what I'm getting to is if the client is is comfortable with being in the commercial, we highly recommend it. Because if they're meeting with sellers, meeting with buyers, meeting with realtors, meeting with contractors, meeting with private lenders, the the respect you get from being on commercials is there's nothing else that I know of that builds it so much quick credibility that they feel like they know you when they, you know, even though you're on a 30 second spot, it's like, hey, Tony, you're the TV guy. And, you know, and just start a conversation as if they've known me for you know, years. Um, and, you, so you, and you wrap this also into some of your direct mail, right? I mean, you know, it's like people, uh, uh, people's website where it says on the website as seen on TV or, you know, on the, all the channels they're on or whatever, it's automatic credibility. How do you blend that into the rest of your marketing and what other marketing besides commercials are you doing? Yeah, hundred percent. If you're, if you're on TV, we recommend our clients. In fact, we tested on our website, 50% better conversion by having as seen on TV. In fact, I want to show you guys. We also we also buy all of our client shirts that say, oh. so they walk around with these, you know, and people start conversing. Oh, you're the guy on TV or a girl yeah. on TV and start conversations. So yeah, anything, anything that you can do with as seen on TV website, direct mail, even people are texting and cold calling. Like we have cl- some clients that'll get rid of texting and cold calling and do TV commercials, but the ones that keep it, we recommend as they build rapport, once they realize that it is an actual seller, oh, by the way, have you seen our TV commercial? And they feel like that has really like opened up, like, you know, kind of put people's walls down when they know that they're, oh yeah, I did see you on TV. You're the ones on TV. Oh, that's cool. And the conversation is just so much different. Right. So anything you can brand with as seen on TV, no doubt about it. it that, yeah. that happens to me. I just have a podcast that's somewhat popular and I've had people basically recognize my voice and it's just instant credibility just because they think because of this podcast or whatever in Seattle Investors Club. Thanks a lot, Joe. It's, it, it does help to, to for branding. How do they get started? I know it's five grand a month spend or, you know, it could be more or less or whatever it is, right? Could it be, could it be less than five grand or is it five grand or it just depends on the market? Yeah. Five grand is our minimum ad spend. We do have some small, small markets where even if we spent five grand, it would be a little bit overkill. Those are the really small markets. But I would say, I, I meant to run the stats, but I would say probably 50% of the US, I, I would say you could probably start with five grand a month. You know, some are going to creep up into the seven to eight grand. You have some bigger markets like a Seattle, you'd probably want to spend more. You know, there's some markets where you're going to want to spend at least 10 grand a month, maybe 15. 
but most markets, five grand a month is is uh, uh, a sufficient ad spend to get hundreds and hundreds of commercials a month. What what what's the type of lead flow uh, from your experience? Are we talking about ten leads, twenty leads, fifty leads? What are we talking about? It's, I know it's all, yeah, it's all over the place. Depends on how much you want to start out with. Like we have some clients that have come out of the gate. We have one client that he opens up multiple markets and he'll spend 20 to 30 grand minimum in, in some of these markets. Yeah. And so he's obviously going to get way more leads than someone who starts with five to 10 grand. But to give you an idea, our JV markets that we're doing, we're typically getting uh, on the low end 20 leads a month. And these are high quality leads, right? These aren't like texting and cold calling leads where you're having to convince them to sell. They're calling us saying, hey, we saw you. They're actually trying to convince us to do business sometimes. And so we're looking at, you know, 20 leads usually on the low end and then, you know, 40 to 60 on the high end. And again, it's going to depend on your ad spend. It's going to depend on a lot of different factors. But we do have some clients that will launch in the first month. They get 50 to 100 calls, like right out of the gate. Um, it's, It's pretty insane. And then sometimes that carries for a few months and then kind of tapers down. And, you know, the the cost per lead is going to be a little bit higher again because you have a higher quality lead but the ROI I mean most of our clients are doing 5 to 10 times on their ad spend and yeah. I don't, not only that but the return on time as well because we manage all of it they don't have to figure out what postcard to do every month or did my cold caller or my texter did they quit do we have to add phone numbers and you know do all that kind of uh you know what I call brain So is the ad spend of 5 grand a month is there a fee on top for your service related to that or is that wrapped in there or is that you do that for the JV or what Yeah that's just the ad spend so we have our fees and stuff that we um that we have as well How does that what are your fees how does that work well, they change from time to time. So if someone wants to book a call with us and talk about it, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get on a call. We have some different fee structures. So uh, if someone wants to, you know, contact us and and talk about fees, we can talk about that. Awesome. So if you get like 20, 30, 40 leads a month, right? Across the country right now, there's a lot of, you know, this cash offer messages out there. We all know that maybe only depends on what your, your, I guess your form of advertising is, but not all of those will be, will be ripe for the price, the right price for an investor to pick up a burr or a flip. Do you feel like the quality of leads because of the message is closer to that? Or is it like any other marketing where 50 to 70% of those leads are not going to be the best fit for an investor? And then if so, what do you do with those leads afterwards? Like do yeah, you so, do real estate agents or what do you do? Yeah. So many times you do marketing, you kind of need to look at how many leads it needs you need to take to, to do a deal, right? Usually average most uh, marketing methods are about 20 leads you need to get to find a good deal. Mm-hmm. 20 leads, that's like five to 10 appointments and you know, three to four or five offers and then one deal, right? There's yeah. that those ratios Funnel. that you yeah. kind of deal with. And so with TV, it's usually between one and every 10 to 20. We have some clients that are like, take some five leads to get one deal because they're getting very high quality calls. And it also depends on your, your exit strategy too. If you're just wholesaling, it, you know, you're not going to do as many deals as someone who does wholesaling, flipping, wholesaling, and burrs, right? Right. It's like for us, we can we can take down more properties because we're burying them. We don't need to, to necessarily have the huge spreads that everybody else has to have when they're flipping properties. Do you recommend that somebody on the team to maximize your conversion dollars is a real estate agent to try and take the difference there on the leads that don't fit or you guys are just too busy with the leads that work? Yeah, we have some realtors that invest too. And so it's an easy transition for them where if they can't buy the property, they'll go on the appointment and then they'll try and get the, uh, try and get the listing. Yeah. Uh, If, if, yeah, I mean, and it, you you have good leads. So if you if you can't convert them yourself, then if you're you're good in sales or good with conversions, you, and you have a good agent on your side, you can refer those leads out to other uh, you know to agents and have them convert them and get a you know thirty percent referral fee if you can absolutely if you're licensed or you can figure out how to get around the you know the referral fee licensing. Yeah. I, I, I definitely have some referral partnerships. We call it a concierge partner to some of the, the investors that spend a lot on marketing. And then we take that as their, if it doesn't work out, they pass it through one of my portals and we pay them back a 25% referral fee. It's, it's a pretty yep. good gig for everybody. Let me ask you real quick about Novation. Have you heard about it? Yeah, it's a big topic. We we do a lot of calls for our clients um, each month. And so we've been talking about novations more. But yeah, I know enough to like, 
you know, kind of talk about it a little bit, but I've never done one. Well, I'm going to give you a gift because we have done a, a, a podcast with Corey Geary, who is one of the guys out there, Novation Nation. Joe, probably drop it in the the uh, show notes here, Joe. But uh, yeah, I think everybody needs to school up. It is sweeping across the nation, replacing wholesaling. All the wholesalers, you know, that are clued into this, you know, the collective genius guys and all that stuff. I think that they are saying now they're innovation first, wholesale second type companies. And I actually had, I'm at EXP Realty, which is, you know, we have what, more than 80,000 agents across the US now and all that stuff. So um, they all know I'm Seattle Investors Club and, and all that stuff. I had a conversation with them a few months ago and I said, hey, you're going to start seeing these because these investors are going to start working with the agents and start listing these wholesale deals on the MLS. And they're using agents to do that. And literally in the last uh, two weeks, they started calling me and saying, hey, we're just like you said, we are starting to see these deals come across our desk. And they are talking to me about that because you have to know what you're doing, right? You can't just, but I'd be curious to hear from you in six months from now and see if you start doing those deals. Cause it seems like you're totally set up and ripe to crush those types of leads, which I think is a, is a big positive for the country because instead of those deals getting sold to investors who flip them into these expensive homes that people have to buy, it's bringing them back to the affordable housing market, right? So I think it's actually a positive for, for real estate across the board. In fact, our local MLS here, it's essentially a net listing. And forever and ever and ever here in, in the Washington area, those have been illegal and not allowed. And they just changed the rule, I think, because of all the NAR lawsuits and everything else going on. And they now are allowing them. So if you guys don't know that, hit me up on our weekly mastermind and I'll tell you about that on Thursdays at 1130. But yeah, I, I think you should go for it because you guys are ripe to absolutely crush it there. It's not complicated. You know, you just have to know the parts and the paperwork which you probably know everybody that already knows that. So I know you want to get going here on time. So I don't want to keep you too long. Aside from the TV marketing that you do, do you do, do you do any other marketing or that's your main focus? That's all you guys do. Yeah, that's the main thing that feeds everything else. So the great thing about TV commercials is it does help other forms of marketing. So, you know, we put as seen on TV in our postcards. We just started um, doing that again late last year. And then, you know, we do a little bit of Facebook retargeting just for people who come on our website. We found that cold traffic from Facebook is not the best use of our money. Um, we spent a little bit of money on Google uh, pay-per-click. Um, we did start um, adding radio. We just added radio here the last, I think just this week, actually, we started. Start a radio business, help people do their same thing. Well, I have a friend that actually talked me into doing the TV thing that has um, kind of a radio program, so I can't cross that. But uh, uh, but yeah, radio. If, if there's anything else that you know ties in with with TV, I would say radio and and uh, direct mail are probably the two best. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of clients that have come to us and say, "Hey, we're crushing it on you know radio." We we heard TV is uh, you know even better because the visual aspect of it. And so we've uh, we've helped a lot of people with uh, with TV that are doing radio as well, and it it does really well together. How, how does the lead come to you off the TV stuff? How does that work? And you know what what do you need to have in place in order to kick this off? I mean, are you going to get bombarded, and you need like some sort of does it drop into a CRM? How do you receive the lead from TV? Yeah, so we we have a phone number on there, so most of the time they call. So we do want you to be dialed in. Um, we help track the calls and, you know, kind of, you know, uh, look at the numbers and statistics and stuff like that through our system. But then the number gets forwarded to um, to our client's CRM. So so they're working the leads. They need to make sure they're either answering the phone or getting back to the client right away. You know, leads are leads... through a phone. They're they're calling. They're not eat, putting it in, dropping it in some web portal. Sometimes they are. Yeah, sometimes they are. Um, we give, give them the option to go to the website too, but usually about 75 to 80% of the people call the phone number. So yeah, you have to have a decent website. We need to make sure, or not make sure, but we encourage that you have like, you know, a lot of reviews on Google. So if they do Google you, you come up and they see that you are credible. The, the difference between doing okay in our TV program and crushing it in our TV program is the sales. You know, so when someone comes to us and they're struggling, We'll say, where are your numbers? Well, either sometimes they don't know their numbers or we'll go in our portal and be like, hey, you got 
you got 90 leads this last like 30 days. What yeah. happened with those leads? And so some people are dialed in and know their numbers and are, you know, answering the phone and following up. And then, you know, some aren't doing a great job and are still, their still numbers are okay, um, but they could be doing a lot better. And that's the same yeah. thing with any marketing. Right? Like anything. Yeah. Interesting. So when you guys, what you guys drop it into your CRM, you have, what does your team look like for your personal business with the TV? How does it work? It Somebody calls, are they picking up live or what? Yeah, we like we like them to pick up live. We have an answering service that rings to our um, lead manager, and if they don't answer, then it goes to a an answering service. We'd rather an answering service, even though sometimes they're not the greatest. At least a human answer the phone. Is that a um, VA? Uh, lead manager is a VA, but the answering service is a third party service. They're in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, the faster you can talk to that lead, it's like they say, striking while the iron's hot. If you can answer the phone while they're ready to do business with you, show that you're a real business. I mean, we listen to some of our clients' calls and I hate to say it, but you know, some of them don't have professional messages. Some of them answer and say, hello. It's like, you know, you, you need to have that image of like, you know what you're doing. If you're on TV, they think, you know, they feel like they, you do know what you're doing. But if you give them that, you know, feeling like you don't by not calling back or you know, answering the phone is not a huge deal, but you know, I know when I call some, I call place, I want someone to answer. Like I want, yeah. I want to do business now. So yeah, we help our clients making sure that, you know, they have that set up and it's a difference between again, having a really good campaign and just having an okay campaign. Are you able to, sorry, I'm going to let you go in one second. Are you able to take like a list? Let's say you have your driving for dollars list or some list, kind of like Facebook, how you can upload a list and then directly target to them. Can you do that with TV through their email and phone or something kind of like you would on Facebook? Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Unfortunately, well, the good thing and bad thing about TV is when you market with TV, you have to market the whole area, right? Gotcha. And so you're going to hit a lot of people, but you're not having to, like for instance, direct mail, it's very targeted. You can hit the same amount of people with TV for a fraction of the cost. And the credibility is much higher. So even though people call it kind of a quote unquote shotgun approach, we are able to target the commercials and or the shows and stations we feel like our clients are watching. Hit a lot more people, but you know, and, and again, it's not quite as dialed in as some of the other marketing methods. But you're hitting a lot more people, and there may be someone that you have on your list to cold call or text that is not on your list that we can hit with TV commercials, right? So right. not every list is perfect. So. Well, good stuff. I, we want to let you go because you know you got to be somewhere. Last two questions. Who uh, are your favorite people to coach you? Like, who do you listen to for your news and information and education these days, your top two or three? And then how can everybody, of course, get in contact with you and explore TV ads uh, for investors or broker investors? I'm a broker investor. I think it's gold for somebody like me, right? Like, because I can convert either way. But uh, how can people get in touch with you and who you're listening to. Yeah. So I, I've, I've converted from, uh, um, you know, I still listen to business stuff, but I used to listen to a lot of real estate stuff. I don't listen to real estate stuff anymore. Typically, I'm more of a general business or personal um, kind of listener now. So like Tony Robbins, a little bit more motivation. He does some business stuff. Um, there's a guy named Joe Dispenza. Like he yeah. is... He's unbelievable from a mindset perspective, just how to calm your mind and not be, you know, us us as high level investors, like we think like we're not doing enough and we're not, you know, not doing this or not doing that. Or why is somebody doing that? And just calming your mind and just like getting yourself centered to where when you're doing business, you're making rash decisions as opposed to like running around with your head cut off and making decisions that, you know, aren't as aren't as calculated. So I like listening to a lot of that stuff. Um, Joe Dispenza, Tony Robbins. Um, Lewis Howes has a great podcast and he talks about, uh, or he has guests that come on to talk about, you know, mindset or, you know, how to, you know, sleep better, eat better, um, and all that kind of stuff. So for me, personal development, I think is, is the, the things that I like to listen to the most. And then, uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me for, you know, the TV commercials, um, remtv.com goes directly to our TV website. So it gives you a little video and perspective of what the TV commercials are and what we're doing. Uh, and then you can also fill out a um, a link to a calendar and book a call with us and my team uh, or myself will get on a call with you and talk about how we can help you with your TV commercials. And then uh, my personal website is TonyJavier.com, T-O-N-Y-J-A-V-I-E-R. 
And uh, we have gap funding, which we didn't talk about. A lot of yeah. other stuff we do for real estate investors that you can uh, look into as well. We're going to have to have you come back. Who's the type of person you're looking to JV with or that you would consider JV in with? Yeah, it's it's um, one of two. Usually it's either someone that's newer in the game that has some business experience and who we feel like is coachable, teachable, and has what we feel like is good to to kind of get to that next level. Actually, that's really it. I mean, it's someone that, you know, is getting in the game. Hopefully they've done some deals. So they kind of have an idea. We're not, we're not here to teach someone brand new, like how to start investing in real estate. Yeah. We want someone that has some education, hopefully has some deals under their belt where, you know, they just have tried some other things and they haven't worked and we can plug in TV commercials and get them leads, right? Cause it's crazy. Some people spend 50 to 75 grand on coaching on one product. They're getting no leads. And then with us, we're actually, you know, participating with them and they're getting leads right away. And then, you know, they can figure out how to do the deals or we can help them, you know, go through them. So we, we love that joint venture partnership because it uh, really, you know, it's a great source of business for us. And it also helps other people as well get, get going. Can't wait to put the word out about this, Tony. Thanks for joining us today. Super excited about this topic and I'll be looking into it, into it more myself because I think you're onto something there. Congrats for uh, being the guy in the room that uh, is doing that. I, don't, I haven't even looked to see if there's anybody else, but apparently uh, you're the guy because we're talking to you. Thanks for joining us today. Joe, anything else? Where can people find the details? of today's podcast. We're going to call this one, if it sounds good, Lead Generation Using TV with Tony Javier. There you go. Heck yeah, guys. You can get all the show notes and the links that we mentioned today by going to seattleinvestorsclub.com slash 166. And if you enjoy this podcast, we'd love you to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thanks, Tony. Good stuff. Thanks, Tony. All right, guys. Hope to see you all at 1130 on Thursdays to join us on our mastermind. We can talk more about this and uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks, Tony. All right. See you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to the Seattle Investors Club podcast. If you have questions that you'd like to have answered on the show, shoot us an email at info at seattleinvestorsclub.com. Now go out, take that action and build that real estate business. Thanks for listening.